In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make powerful pop music, kind of in the style like Benson Boone, Jake, Charlie Puth. And to do that, I remade Benson Boone's biggest hit right now called Beautiful Things. And I'll break down my remake of the song's elements, the sounds of those elements, the mixing, the structure and arrangement, all that jazz. And hopefully by the end of this tutorial, you can make a song in a similar powerful pop style to this one. Set the tempo around 140 BPM. Start off by making some chill piano chords. These are just simple chords that I put into a progression and then I use the strum feature in FL Studio. And if you need help coming up with simple chords like this, my best advice is to go to the legacy version of ChordChord.com. All you have to do is pick your key, generate, and then it gives you some nice chords like this and it tells you the notes in the chords and then you could play them and see how they sound. Not a sponsor, I just really like using that website a lot. And for the sound of that piano, I use this piano preset from Flex. Next, chop up those chords into triplets and a guitar. <laughs> The best way to chop it up into triplets like this is to go to the one third step. It gives you more lines that you could f figure out with triplets where it goes like da 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 with the metronome. <laughs> like that. And I used a ton of presets to accomplish this sound. I used this guitar preset from Flex, this piano preset from Flex, this metal guitar preset from Flex, another metal guitar preset from Flex, this electric guitar preset from Flex, this electric guitar preset from Flex, and then a simple synth from MHA's Volume 3 Sound Bank for Vital, and then another chord preset from the same pack. <laughs> So the synth down here really elevates the guitar sound. You really can't hear it on its own in the mix, but once it's actually with all the other sounds, it really elevates it and gives it some amplification. And the rest of these are just to build like a guitar atmosphere with the sound. And the piano just helps again with some amplification with the sound. You don't really hear that as much. And then for mixing, I put this EQ on here to get rid of a good chunk of the lows just because with the lows, the sound would be very muddy and unappealing in the mix later. Later on. So for this sound in particular, you want to get rid of a good chunk of the lows and then boost a little bit of the highs to give it an extra sense of crispiness and amplifying a little bit of the higher frequencies as well. I put a reverb on here with these settings and a substantial low cut as well, just so that again with the lows, it's not muddy with the lows. And then for the reverb, it's just to extend the sounds a little bit and gives it some more depth in the mix. And then a simple sidechain on here, it's pretty small, it's not really noticeable, but it just helps the drums that we're gonna make later just sound a little more impactful when they first hit. Next, take the bass notes from those chords and put them into some bass presets. And by bass notes, I mean like the root notes of the chords down here, like this is a D sharp chord, this is an A sharp chord, so you're just taking the root notes right here and putting them into some bass presets. They sound like this. I used four flex bass presets to accomplish the sound. I used this one, this one, this one, and this one as well. So all these sounds are really on the electric and acoustic bass sounding side of things. And then for mixing, I put a Fruity Blood Overdrive on here. Nothing done to it, just a preset thrown in there. Just to really give some extra power and amplification for the bass sound. And then the same side chain from earlier. Next, just put one note into an electric guitar and this one note can follow the vocal melodies just to give some extra flavor to the vocal melody. And for the sound, I used FL Slayer right here. Now for the drums. I have a kick. Make sure it's very impactful, very punchy, like that you would hear in like rock songs and stuff like that. I layered it with another kick. This is kind of a softer kick and it kind of just acts as a top kick to give it more texture. I have a snare. It's a very textured, loud snare, again, like you would hear in a rock song. I have another one of those, and I put them in a pattern like this. The kick follows the triplets of the chords and bass. You can't really see it, but the chords and the bass play on the kick. And then over here, that changes and it just goes on the regular bar line. And then I added a crash rhythm that sounds like this. It's a louder, wider crash. And then in the middle of the those bars, it's a kind of thinner, different sound for a crash. And then I just have a ride loop in the background as well. 
All together, the drums sound like this. And all of the drum samples have a Fruity Blood Overdrive on here because we really want these drums to have a large power aspect to it. So this really helps to give it a blasting, powerful effect. Now for the structure and arrangement of this track. So this tutorial is really just focusing on the chorus of a song like this, but I also included kind of like an outro and then kind of like a build up as well. So for the build up, I just have the bass playing and then I took the snare and I just made it into a build up with a automation for the volume. I also have a kick that just plays on every beginning of the bar. And then I also have a riser. Instrumental break. And then for the chorus, you have everything all together. You have the drum loop that we made. We have the guitar, the bass, the one shot guitar that fits with the vocal melody. And then I also just chopped up a drone in here to give it some extra effects in the background just to kind of fill up the mix a little bit. And then for the outro, all I have is the vocals and then the piano that we made at the very beginning. Here is the final result. Don't take these beautiful things that I've got. Please stop. 